Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday. It is the 13th day of April, year of our Lord, 2022, Wednesday in Holy Week. I do pray this finds you well. Uh, spring was nice while it lasted, uh, but uh, boy, it got really cold, man, well, relatively cold. Keep uh, the people. I have many colleagues and friends in the Dakotas. Uh, man, they're getting blasted with snow, 20 some inches in areas. Uh, hopefully, it'll warm up and be gone quickly, but they're, they're under blizzard conditions. We also had, uh, I didn't see reports of injuries or deaths, but I know the governor of Iowa, so the adjacent state to where I'm right, right now, I think most of you know that, um, she declared seven counties a disaster area. Uh, kind of up in the northeast region uh, of the state. Um, I'm familiar with some of those areas. Don't get up that way too much. Uh, but anyway, uh, Holy Week, remember, tomorrow, church, 6.30 p.m., Monday, Thursday, the institution of the Lord's Supper. Good Friday, the chief service will be at noon. Uh, and then we will have the Tannabrae Vespers, the service of darkness, at 7 p.m. on Good Friday. The Easter Vigil, my the, the Vigil of Easter, the Easter Vigil, the Vigil of Easter, my favorite service of Holy Week, when e when Easter is first ushered in um, after the sun goes down, will be at 7 p.m. on Holy Saturday. That's a long service. We will have a baptism and, and confirmation. Rejoice about that. That's wonderful. An adult baptism, adult conversation, uh, conver uh, confirmation. So it's very very um, very very blessed thing. It's a long service. Uh, I encourage families to bring their kids to that. Bring your kids in their jammies. Let them lie down on the pew. The church is completely dark. The whole first hour and a half of the service is me reading, uh, reading these ancient texts of, of the Old Testament and all these promises of, of how God would rescue his people, ultimately pointing to our Lord Jesus Christ. And then... Uh, after that hour or so of reading, we remember our baptism. We'll do a baptism and a confirmation, make the Easter proclamation, and then finish the service with the gospel reading, sermon. I read the sermon of John Chrysostom, one of the great church fathers, 600-word sermon written for that night. And then uh, the service of the sacraments. And, and that'll be it. But that's about an hour and 45 minutes or so by the time we start and the time it ends. So there's candles and we process in during candles. It's a very, uh, a very ornate service. Um, so uh, you'll be blessed if you come to that. And then Easter Day, so Sunday the 17th, we have 6.30 sunrise service followed by our Easter breakfast. And then 9 o'clock, the Feast of the Resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And again, in accordance with the daily lectionary, for this Wednesday in Holy Week, we'll read from uh, the letter to the Hebrews, all of chapter 4, and that's verses 1 through 16. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we, who have believed, enter that rest, as he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter it because of disobedience, Again, he appoints a certain day today, saying through David so long afterward in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. 
For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And that is the word of the Lord. Now, this builds on what we read last night. Uh, today, if you hear his voice, that we heard that last night, and it's quoted again today. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. It's in the rebellion. And uh, uh, that, that uh, beautiful word of God reminds us, cling to what he has said. Cling to what he has given you. Satan does not want you to enter the rest of God. He does not want you to be at peace. He wants you to be focusing on your paltry works. And then um, uh, and just he does this old bait and switch. He's like, oh, yeah, you're a good person. And pat you on the back. And, and, and when the hour is too late, he reminds you just how despicable you are. And you despair of, of all of it. Uh, trust in the word of God. You know, those people that the, writer, the, the preacher here of Hebrews, and again, we probably, probably St. Paul, we don't know for, for certain. This, in this sermon, he, he reminds them of these people who were disobedient. That's the people during the time of Exodus, as we heard. And they couldn't enter the rest of God because they didn't believe his word. And he told them that they would enter it. He told them that he would be with them. He told them that he you know, would conquer their enemies. And, and yet when they went in, remember they sent in spies, and when they went in, eh, you know, they saw people bigger than them, uh, lots of food. It's like, oh, there's no way, uh, even though God had told them. Hasn't he told you that all your sin is forgiven? We'll hear this on Good Friday, that God has laid on the, this servant, the suffering servant, of course, that's Christ our Lord, has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, there is nothing. We stand naked, as the preacher says here. We stand naked before God. There's nothing. He does not know about you, about the darkness of your heart, and yet that darkness he has laid on his son. That's what happened in our Lord's baptism. You know, your sin was laid on him, right? and then put to death in him. This is everything God tells us. You know, so we cling you know, to what his voice tells us. This is the word. This is all we have. Um, and it's a very good thing because it's all you need because it is the word of Christ. And then how this section ends, and he's going to, again, continue with this tomorrow. Since then we have a great high priest. It's our Lord Jesus Christ who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast again. Cling to, hold fast that confession. Keep it close to you. you know, the confession of Christ, the confession of what he has done, of what your baptism does, what the Lord's Supper is. You know, think about this, what Paul, uh, with, with the writer to the Hebrews says, the preacher says, you know, he knows who you are. He, you know, he was a human being too. He knows what it means to be tempted, yet he didn't fall. Remember, he fills the law perfectly for us, and yet still carries our sin. He knows who you are. You know, so then this, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. It is terrifying to think about standing in the presence of the living God. And yet, and you think about the beginning of Revelation. It's not the only place this happens, but that's probably the most uh, significant, at least for me and us at this moment. And John you know, stands before the exalted Christ. He's on the island of Patmos and is uh, given this vision of heaven, and, and he hears you know, how he describes Christ. A face like the sun, stars in his hands, a sword coming out of his mouth, and his voice is like thunderous waters. If you've ever been to Niagara Falls, you know you get anywhere near that. You can hear that water for miles. You know, if you get anywhere near it, it's thunderous, thunderous waters, waters going over a, a, a waterfall, and he falls down as if dead. It's terrifying. And what does Jesus do? Get up, touches him, 
Kira. So we can approach because of Jesus, because he holds the keys of death and Hades, because our iniquity has been laid on him, we can approach the throne of grace in a good conscience. Now, that doesn't mean I, I'm not aware of my sin, you know, uh, but it means I know that in Christ I'm saved. This is what we hold fast to. And again, this is what uh, 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 Hebrews is going to tell us in the next several days. Now let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And again, we turn to pages 288 and 289 as we recite the litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God, their Father in heaven, have mercy. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us, help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain, sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, and to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. 
for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Bring to your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of a hymn, hymn 610. I think I'll sing it all. It's short. Uh, five stanzas, but they're very short. This is by Synesius of Cyrene who died around the year 414. So this is uh, one of those beautiful old hymns. I think I, sent, I sang one from Clement of Alexandria last night, uh, um, Shepherd of Tender Youth. My, uh, and he died around the year 220. So this is a couple hundred years later, but still a very long time ago. Lord Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin. From worldly passion set me free and make me pure within. Lord Jesus, think on me, by anxious thoughts oppressed. Let me your loving servant be and taste your promised rest. Lord Jesus, think on me, amid the battle strife. In all my pain and misery, oh, be my health and life. Lord Jesus, think on me, nor let me go astray. Through darkness and perplexity, point out your chosen way. Lord Jesus, think on me, that when this life is past, I may the eternal brightness see and share your joy at last. Again, that's hymn 610, Lord Jesus, think on me. Uh, you probably notice my voice is a little gravelly. Uh, uh, I have a sneaky suspicion I'm coming down with a nice cold. It's Holy Week, what we knew about that. But uh, yeah, keep me in your prayers that uh, maybe it's just allergies. But uh, I'll muddle through. Uh, best I can, one way or the other. Um, you know, God willing, I'll be there. So uh, uh, anyway, I uh, apologize for the graveliness. And I do present, uh, bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.